Hey guys. You all right? Let me know if you can see and hear me, okay? Hey Fran. Hi Sam. Hi Ellie. Hey Lisa, you are right? Hi Stacey, thank you. Thanks for joining me tonight guys. We are going to be doing some celestial designs. Hi June, hi Kelly. Hey Karen. Hi Rachel. So what we'll do just while we're waiting for a few more people to join is just quickly go through the kit list. I left off some very important <laughs> details of the kit list. First one being Elizabeth Chrome Dust. So you guys are definitely going to need this for these nails. You're also going to be needing Forget Me or Not gel colour. absolutely love this gel colour. It's a really nice nude for our bases. We're going to be using a little bit of maple, which is one of the stunning flakes. So pretty. You've got Melody. That'll be fine, Fran. Um, any dust will do, to be honest. If you guys want to use different colours, you totally can. I just chose to go with Elizabeth because she's my absolute favourite. I'm also going to be using the Gel Paint Plus. I've got black and white, but if you guys have just got the normal um, paints, that's totally fine. Or if you guys have got black and white gel colours, again, you should manage with that too. This is just going to be for outlining and for doing some clouds. Good old gimme strength. We're going to need lots of that. And I'm going to be using Don't Be Tacky top coat as well liquid you're going to need a little bit of prep and dehydrate and tools we're going to need a wee 240 grit buffer your silicone tool this is what i'm going to be using to chrome with dotting tool our detailer brush which is our super fine brush the chrome tool as well if you guys can grab a new sponge for this make sure it's not got any chrome on it because we're going to be using it for painting our clouds with and a couple of lint-free pads too are going to be handy too so if you guys are painting along make sure you've got all those bits and pieces out Let me just make sure that I'm in frame all right. If I do go out of frame, please let me know, guys. Um, I wonder if I can get this up on my iPad so I can see if any comments are coming through. Yeah. So some of the other Magpie educators should be on here if you guys have got any questions at all. So let's begin with Forget Me and Not. Look how beautiful this colour is. This is great to use as a background for so many designs. And I'm sure loads of the educators will have been using this in their lives. So I'm just doing a nice thin coat. I've got a bit of fluff in there already. Typical. And I'm going to be doing this on both nails, okay? Hey Sarah, hey Kaylee. <laughs> I'm not speaking to you, Siri. <laughs> Second tip, I'm just going to do the same.
And I'm going to do two coats of this for my base. You don't really need two coats. If I was doing it on a client, I would just have one so that I wouldn't get too bulky, but I want these to be pretty nude. So I'm going to do two. So that's my first tip ready. second guy coated then we're gonna do some wee clouds next if you guys saw um nikki and jenny's live the other night nikki done some really nice clouds for her design and we're gonna do a similar technique we're gonna use the the sponge method but we're gonna do it slightly different so go ahead and pop those both into cure if you guys don't have forget me or not, definitely get it in your basket because it is one of my most populars. Who's painting along with me tonight? Let me know if you are, guys, and make sure you tag me in your your pictures. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of prep and dehydrate and pop this onto my lint free pad. And this is just to remove that tacky layer of our gel colour so that we're not slipping around when we're doing our nail art. Oh, I can't wait to see your designs, Fran. You've been doing so well keeping up with everyone's lives. I've got so many that I need to catch up on. So I'm giving that a good wipe until that nail goes matte. Oh, great, Sam. Oh, loads of you guys are joining in. You'll need to tag me so that I can see. So I'll just wait for that other tip to come out and then I'll go ahead and wipe that with prep and dehydrate. The reason that we don't use cleanser when we're doing our nail art to wipe the tacky layer is because cleanser's got oils in it. So if you guys use that on your nails, then what you can get is little bubbles um, when you're painting with your, your nail art. So make sure you've always got prep and dehydrate handy before you do your design. Oh, you're starting a fresh wheel, Fran. I know there's so many, isn't there? Okay, so let's just wipe this guy off until it goes matte as well. Okay, so to create our clouds, what we're gonna do is grab a little bit of our gel paint and pop this in our dish. You and Lloyd are playing along. Oh, brilliant, Kaylee, hi Lloyd. I'll definitely need to see what you guys are up to. So I've just got a wee bit of gel there and I'm going to put it on like so. Now I just want to show you before I put this on the nail how I'm going to do this. So what you guys don't want to do is use the flat part of this tool. We want to have this right on the tip. If you guys use the flat part of the tool your clouds are gonna be super big, okay? And although that's a nice effect when I'm doing it there, that is gonna be way too big for our nail. So what we wanna make sure that we're doing is you're dunking in just the tip of your chrome brush, and that is what you're gonna do. And you're gonna go one dimple at the top, dip in again, and you're gonna go a little bit off to the side on the left, and then you're gonna dip in again and go a little bit to the side on the right. Then what I want you to do is turn your chrome tool around so that you're using that sponge that hasn't got any product on it. And this is what you are gonna use to blend that product down a little bit, okay? So we're gonna do this on, on both nails. So don't worry if one goes a little bit wrong, we can save it on the second one. So I'm dipping in the tip of that chrome tool into my paint. 
and then I'm just going to randomly do these clouds, doesn't really matter where you do them. And I'm going to do my first dimple at the top, dip back in again, do a dimple a little bit to the left, dip in again, and then go a little bit to the right. Then I'm going to flip that tool around, pat it off and make sure that I've got any excess off. And just using the tip, I'm going to fade that cloud just down ever so slightly to make it look nice and fluffy. And then I'm just going to repeat that across the nail. The reason that I like to use the gel paint plus for this rather than the, the normal gel paint or your like normal gel colours because the plus is a little bit thicker, it's really going to hold the sponge marks nicely. And for this design, you know, we want the clouds to look nice and sketchy. If you are using, you know, a normal gel paint or a plain Jane or whatever, just make sure you're using a super, super light touch. And you should still get the same effect. Okay, so I've got a couple random clouds. This one's going a little bit skew with, but that's all right. And I'm going to pop that into Cure for 60 seconds. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same on this side, okay? So just using the tip of that tool. And this is just the quickest and easiest way, I think, for you guys to do clouds. Okay, so they're pretty rough. Don't need to be neat at all. I'm just gonna go back over that one and re-sponge it. If you guys get too much product on these clouds, just go back over with the back of your sponge and lightly press, and that's gonna change it up, okay? So I'm gonna pop that one in for a full cure as well. And then we're gonna go and get our maple flakes out. So I'm going to give these a good shake before I get going. Oh, I'll try not rattle you guys at the same time. And this is just going to break them up. And I'm going to pop these into the lid. I hope they don't go everywhere. How beautiful are they? I love all the magpie flakes. They're so, so pretty. And I'm gonna use my dotting tool to apply these with. You guys can use your brushes if you want, you know, your detailer brush, whatever. But the reason that I like to use a metal tool is because then I can really break these flakes up. So I'm just gonna get a little bit of gimme strength. And I'm gonna go over this nail just to encapsulate those clouds and we're gonna make it look like it's raining flakes okay so i've just got a thin layer on there and then i'm gonna go in with my dotting tool unless is certainly more with these okay so even that amount that i've got that's gonna be too much i literally just want a couple of flakes so I'm just going to let those drop. Oh, way too much. That's all right, because we're going to mash these up with the other side. So using my thinner side, I'm just going to tap these flakes. And that's going to make them a lot smaller. And we want to create like a little cloud fade. I'm going to get some of these off and move them to down here. So you want to tap, 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 tap until you get the little ones at the bottom and have the larger ones at the top. And I'm just going to do the same on the rest of the clouds. Again, you don't need to be particularly neat. You can apply these flakes into the cured tacky layer of gel, but I much prefer doing it in the wet layer because then I can, you know, move them around and break them up a little bit easier. It just gives me a little bit more freedom. Okay, so we've got our little raining flakes and I'm gonna go ahead and pop that into Cure and repeat it on in the next one. 
Sorry, these designs are so similar. We're sticking with the with the theme. So a nice thin layer. I'm gonna give me strength first. And then going in with our flakes. Just picking up a wee bit with my tool and I'm just letting it fall. I'm barely touching the nail there with my chrome tool because I don't want to overdo it. You can't really breathe when you're using these flakes either because they will actually go everywhere. Super pretty. Okay, and I'm bringing the flakes up oh, into the clouds slightly as well. And then tap, tap, tap and bringing them down until I'm happy. Okay. So let's pop them in. So that's my first one sorted. <laughs> flakes obsessed. We do love the flakes. The flakes are one of my favourite, favourite products to use, to be honest. They just create such a lovely texture to your designs. So I'm just capping this again with another thin coat of Gimme Strength. And I'm using my light above me to check that we are all nice and smooth. If you're not smooth, if you've got any ripples about, you can either go in with your striper brush or you can just go ahead, pop that nail upside down and then it's gonna self-level. Thankful for masks when you're using your flakes and chrome. I know, tell me about it, Fran. Especially the chrome, it gets everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna do the same with this little guy. Thin layer, give me strength, just to cap these in, and then we're gonna paint. I think we'll go for a sun and a moon. The clouds are pretty straightforward, so you guys, I mean, if you want to try the clouds, by all means, go for it. But we'll do this, Mr. Moon, and we'll do the big sun tonight. Okay, so I'm letting those both have a full cure. And then I'm gonna get my prep and dehydrate again. Give that a good old wipe and I'm gonna get my 240 buffer just to prep that nail for nail art. Give this guy a good wipe over. It's gonna go matte again. And we'll give it a wee buff. So I'm just being nice and gentle. Don't worry, your design isn't gonna come off by doing this buff. Cause we're using a 240 grit buffer, nice and gently. It's just gonna get that surface nice and smooth and give your gel paint something to grip to. Okay, give that a wee dust off. And again, another wipe with our prep and dehydrate. And I'll do the same on the other one before I forget. I think these would look so cool over like a black background or a dark blue background as well. So to do our sun and our moon, we're gonna mix Elizabeth dust with Give Me Strength. And this is my favorite way to use the chrome as well. Not my favorite way, one of my favorites. They're stunning when they're chrome, but if you struggle with painting, using a chrome to paint with rather than a gel paint, 
is gonna be super, super easy. So what I'll do is get a little bit of my gimme strength again and pop that on my dish. Just a couple of dots. Oh, you're doing a black version. Great, Stacey. I can't wait to see that. Then I'm gonna get my Elizabeth dust, which is gonna go ever. We're gonna do one fairy teaspoon of this. Maybe two actually, just for good measure. We want this to be quite a pigmented mix. We don't want it to be too watery. Okay, so that's holding its shape nicely and getting that everywhere. And um, what we're going to draw first is our moon. So let me just show you here, nice and big, how we're going to do this. So I'm going to go through my paint. <laughs> Told you, you can't breathe with this stuff about. I think that's looking just a little bit too lumpy. You see how I've still got all these lumps at the end? I'm just going to pop on a little bit more. Give me strength for this mix. And this is why it's good to use a metal tool when you're mixing this in because that's going to help mash out your chrome. See how that's looking a lot smoother now. That's what we're going for. Okay, so let me show you on here. I'm going to strike through that product. Obviously not going to have this much when I'm doing it on my nail, but just so you can see, we're going to do a big three for our moon, okay? So we're going to start there and pull round. And then we're going to pull in for our wee nose. And we're going to have a wee bump on the bottom for the mouth. And then we're going to join that three back up again okay so that's the shape that we're going for on the inside and then we're gonna fill it out so let me leave that there so that you guys can use that as a guide make that match a little boy a little bit more than what mine matched so I'm just scoring my detailer brush through that product making sure that I don't have any beads And I'm going to start at the top here. And I'm going to curve around. These lines don't need to be thin because we're going to we're going to fill in the full thing, so don't worry about that. And then I'm going to pull in to create as we nose. Pull out again and then do a little ripple for his mouth. And I'm going to turn that brush around. And pull up, okay. This moon's going to be on his side a bit, but that's all right. Now getting a lot more product on my brush, I'm just going to thicken this guy up, okay. Just pulling around those edges. Going to make him look a little bit more beefy. And then fill it in this area where his face is going to be. If you guys make any mistakes with your, your painting, that's totally fine. Because you can just use your silicone tool or wipe anything away that you want. Okay, I'm going to pull that product around. Then to get this flick matching on the other side, I'm going to wipe that product out of my brush. I'm going to be naughty and turn this around. And I'm going to pull the product that we've already got on there to make that nice and thin. Okay. Because we want that to be symmetrical-ish. And then I'm just going to thicken up any areas 
that I think need it. So I'm just going to pull this down across here until you're happy with your little moon shape. Just pull that up so it's a little bit more curved. And then we're going to cure that for 60 seconds, okay? For our other nail, we're going to do a sun. So we're going to have it coming off the edge like this guy here. It's up to you guys if you want to use your dotting tool. That's probably going to be easiest, so I'll show you using my dotting tool. And I'm just going to roll this brush brush tool into the product, okay, to really load up that dotting tool. And we're going to go across the top left. Shouldn't have done a cloud there, really. And I'm just gently going round. Because your dotting tool is round, it just makes your life easier when it comes to doing circles. Obviously, it's what it's for. Okay, so I'm going to make that wee bit bigger, just pulling out those edges. To where I want to go. Okay, pull that up. And then I'm going to cure him for 60 seconds as well. Now that this guy is all set, I'm going to get my prep and dehydrate again. And just remove that tacky layer of the gimme strength. Because we are going to outline him now. Okay, so giving that a good wipe over, it shouldn't take anything off. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our gel paint. So black gel paint plus is what I'm using because you can get super thin lines with the gel paint plus. But if you guys have just got the normal one, that's totally fine. I love using them both for, for different things, but if you had to get one of them, I would get the plus. So I'm just getting a wee bit of that out there. And we're gonna go ahead and do our outline with our detailer brush. Give that a wee wipe out on your lint-free towel. Never use, you know, cleanser or, or prep on your brush because that's going to wreck it. And again, what I'm going to do is just strike through that product. You still want to get a decent amount of product on your brush, but you want to use a super gentle touch. Okay, so I've still got a tiny, tiny amount there, but I want to make sure that I don't have any bubbles on the end of this guy. So I'm going to start in this top corner again, and I'm just going to take it a little section at a time. Because we're doing curved lines, I find it a lot easier to just take it a section at a time. I'm going to go nice and lightly to begin with. And then once I've got that initial outline, I'll go over it again while it's still wet to make it nice and black. But this is just in case I make any mistakes. So I'm just gently tracing that design that we've done there. You can get super, super, super small lines with this guy if you're nice and gentle. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just bringing up that little mouth. Oh, hey, Stina Magpie Sweden. Hello, hello. So I'm just gonna go see that little ball on the end there. It's tiny, so you probably can't see it, but if you get that, that's what we wanna avoid. So I'm just gonna pull down. Again, I'm just taking it in really small movements. Be nice and gentle. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull up over the top. doesn't matter if your lines aren't absolutely perfect because this is going to be pretty sketchy design it's all right if it's not perfect It's such a shaky hand. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just go over any parts that need to be a little bit blacker and a little bit thicker because you've already got that wet gel there. It's going to be a lot easier to just trace this all in one movement now. Just to make it stand out a little bit more. I'm gonna clean up the tip of that moon with my silicone tool so you guys can see how I would do that as well. Okay. And just clean up this top section. Spin it around. And pull it down. Okay. Now using my silicone tool, just wipe this off. If you guys have made any mistakes, all you need to do is go ahead and grab your silicone tool and just nudge that product where you want it. This is super handy for cleaning up and for making your lines look a lot thinner. So I'm just gonna flash cure that and then we can get his face on. What we'll do for our sun is do our little rays. Now these were driving me mad earlier when I was um, practicing this so I hope I can I can do these. They're really simple to do. I just, my brain wasn't working this afternoon. So what we're going to do for these guys, let me show you on here first. We're going to do like a stretched out S, okay? So you're going to go down, up, and come to a point. And then you're going to do the same on the other side. Down, up, and come to a point. And that's how we create the wavy rays that we're going to do. And then, I don't know why I'm going down here to dip into my product. Then we're also going to do some pointed ones. So I'm just going to go down at an angle and then up again. And we're going to fill that in. Okay, so you're going to rotate these around the sun. So let's get my product on here. I'm getting a good amount on this because it doesn't need to be particularly thin. And we'll do our wiggly one first at the bottom. So I'm going to do like a stretched out S. And then I'm going to copy that on the other side. Okay. 
and then I'm gonna do a pointed one fill that in then we're gonna do a stretched out S again and a good amount of product on there and then doing our pointed one again then we might have space for a little top of an S up here okay so we've got the outline of our sun and we'll pop that into QA. Just giving that brush a wee wipe out. And then we're gonna give our moon a wee face. So what we've got is the little eye, little mouth, and I've given him a wee dimple as well. So get nice and thin first. We'll begin easy with the wee mouth. All I'm doing is loading up that product on my brush and I'm just gonna pull twice to create a little smile there. And then we'll do his eye. So I'm gonna make his eye quite high up. And I'm just gonna do a little line at an angle, like that. And then I'm gonna mirror that on the bottom. And then I'm gonna get a tiny wee dot on my detailer brush and use that to be the dot of his eye. Okay, and then if you wanna add in a wee dimple or a wee cheek you can if you don't have room that's all right mine's going to be a little bit tight for space but we'll put it up here and i'll make it a little dimple okay like so and then all we're going to do is add some little sketchy bits so just going to go around the edges just so that it looks sketched out. Okay, and I'm gonna come along the bottom nice and gentle with my brush when I'm doing curves. And one down here as well. And we'll do one on the top too. Okay. Pop that into Cure. Oh, have I just smashed that off and that? Pop that into cure for 60 seconds. Now for our sun. Again, just remove that tacky layer of your prep and dehydrate so that it goes matte. And we're gonna go ahead and outline this guy next. So I'm getting a good amount of product on my brush and I'm gonna start at the top here and do the outline of my sun just dragging that brush through the product at different angles so that I can get it all coated so I'm using a bit more pressure with this because we've got those little rays coming out and they're gonna be bumpy you want to have a lot of of pressure on if you are going over bumps and then we'll do our little outlines okay so again take it nice and low <laughs> nice and low nice and slow to begin with just to get that outline and then you can go over it again to make it a little bit blacker like that and we're just going to work our way along our sun edge to 
taking that to a point. And then going from a little wobbly ray. I hope the sun comes out soon in Scotland. It has been raining non-stop. It was snowing, we had snow for ages. And now it's all gone, it's like it never happened. We get about three days of summer in June and then it rains the rest of the year. Okay, so I'm just pulling that out to a point. And then I'm gonna do this guy up here. If you guys wanna flash cure each of these, then by all means go ahead and do that. Just cure them for 10 seconds and then if you're not happy with a certain part of it, you can just wipe it off. So let me put that in. I'm totally neglecting the comments. Hopefully the girls have got you if you're asking me any questions. So once we've got our outlines done on this guy, we're gonna go over the top with Gimme Strength again, just so that we can chrome on top. So whenever I'm chroming anything, I'll always do a thin layer of Gimme Strength to cap the design and then buff so that we've got a nice matte finish. Okay, so I'm just checking that nail. Just check that we're nice and smooth. Hold it upside down if you need to. And then we'll pop that into cure. And then for our sun, give him a little face. So, just gonna do a little mouth at the bottom here. Same as I did with the moon, placing my brush down and then gently pulling up just to get that little flick. And then I'm going to put a tiny bead of product just on top of this, just to create what looks like the top of her edge of her lip. Then for the eye, again, don't worry too much about this. I'm just going to have a little wave that comes out the end because we can't really see her eyes. So just creating a little crease there coming out like that. Then we're just going to do the same details as the moon. So I'm just going around the edge, nice light touch. And I'm making sure that that line is broken. I don't want it to be a solid black line going around the edge. We want it to look sketchy. And then I'm going to go through the rays and again at different points. Just highlight in there as well. Nice and gentle. Doesn't matter what side you do them on. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop that into cure for 60 seconds as well. Once this guy is cooked, we're going to wipe with Prep and Dehydrate again. Remove that tacky layer. And then we're going to buff and do some chroming. I think this chrome section is my favourite part of the design, to be honest. I love doing like tiny chrome features. Okay, so make sure that he's stuck on. And then with my 240 buffer, just going over that design, nice and gentle. So this way our chrome definitely isn't gonna stick to anything because we've buffed all of that shine away. 
Okay. And then give that a dust and a wipe. So that it goes nice and matte. Okay, same with this guy. Oh, we're gonna put gimme strength on that first. And pop that in to cure. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this gold dust and get a little bit more black out of my palette. So let me just show you how we're going to do these stars. There's a few different ways that you guys can do stars. Do whatever you're comfortable with. Um, try a few different techniques. And see what works for you. My hands are covered. Honestly, this is me trying to be clean. <laughs> so the easiest way that I find to do stars, go ahead and drag your brush through that paint and what I like to do is go down and then go across and then I like to fill in the edges so I'll go ahead and join that up to there And then join this little section in there. And just do that on either side. If you want like a big star. And then I just re-go over and thicken it up. Obviously it's going to be, <laughs> we hope it's going to be a lot neater than this on the nail. But that is the idea that we're going for. And then what you can do is a little guy beside it. Just like that. And then to the side. If it's too small, I, I don't fill in the gap. I just do it like that. Or the other style of star that you can do, which is quite cool for these kind of nails, is load up your brush. Get a good bead of product on your brush. And place that bead down and pull down and lift up. And then you're going to do the same on this side. Place that bead down, leave it a second, pull in and pull up. And then you're going to do the same on the back. Place it down, in and up. And then same on that side. Place it down, in and up. Okay, so it's up to you what, what kind of stars you want to do. If you want to do your normal stars as well, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to do a few random ones, shall we? So I'm going to load this brush up and I think we'll begin with a nice big one up here. Can you see that? All right. So I'm going to load that brush up. And go about here. Pull that product down. And then go across. I'm going to get a tiny amount on, on my brush and just join those corners up ever so slightly. Just to bulk it up a little bit. Like that, okay. So it looks quite big. And then 
I'll maybe go below it and just do a tiny Baba star. Make sure you're wiping off your brush, your excess product on your brush to get it nice and small. I'm literally just using the tip of my brush for that. And then when we do another wee one up there, just for the crack. Okay, so we've got a wee cluster of stars. If you want to do some little dots as well, you can do that. Whoa. What have we got here? Get that off. So to do little dots, you're just going to load that tool up. And then... Just do a few dots so it looks like wee stars. And then we'll maybe do another one over here, just a wee one. I always think they look so lonely when it's just one star. I always feel like there's got to be two. Okay, so you can get super, super tiny with these. And I'm going to pop that into cure, but I'm only going to cure it for 15 seconds because the Gel Paints Plus can be quite tricky to chrome with if you if you do a full cure. And I'm also going to make sure that I'm putting that lamp, that nail on its side, because if I put that in like that and any of the lights miss where my paint is, then it's not going to cure properly. So I'm literally just going to hold that in the light for 15 seconds. You'd be fine if this was on a client's hand because they're going to have their hands flat. But because these tips are a little bit higher, you just want to make sure that you pop it on its side. So 15 seconds and we are going to get good old Lizzie dust. And we're going to chrome it this time. And you need the tiniest, tiniest amount of product. So I'm literally just going to tap that silicone tool on the edge there. And that's going to be enough to do that whole nail. So I'm just going to rub that over the sections that I did my stars. And then I'm going to use the clean side of that silicone tool just to smooth it in. And you can see that it's only stuck to the bits that we've chromed. Once we're happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and do another layer of Gimme Strength and then top coat it. Just so that we've got everything nice and smooth. Pop that guy in. And then we'll do some little stars on this one. We'll maybe do a wee shooting, a shooting planet. So we're going to wipe this first. And let's do a comet this time. So I'm going to grab my dotting tool. And I'm going to be nice and gentle. And just do a little dot like that. 
and then grab my detailer brush and we're just gonna do some lines <laughs> look at the neck of my gloves so sorry guys i'm trying my best to be clean okay just like that and i'm gonna go over that just again just to make sure that that chrome sticks to it I'm going to do different bits. Should have done that a little bit straighter, Ruth. <laughs> it's a curveball comet. <laughs> okay. And we'll do some of the other style stars on here. So I'm just going to place the bead down and drag and do the same on all four corners. This guy's probably going to be a little bit too big, but it's all right. When you are doing your, your chrome art, you want to make sure that you do leave a good gap between like mine's probably a little bit too close for comfort but it'll be okay and we'll just do a couple of wee stars up here just like we did on the other nail Okay, pop that in for 15 seconds. And then the chroma again. Just using that tiny amount that's there. You really don't need much at all. And I'm just going to go over those sections. Good amount of pressure. Really rubbing that in. That's how we do our little chrome details. And finally, over with our grimy strength again. And then we can top coat these, and that'll be us. Okay, pop that guy in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my Don't Be Tacky to top coat. No, oh, wrong one. Just check the comments while I'm putting that up. Oh, thank you, Laura. Oh, you're all sorted. Nobody's got any questions. I'm just going to pop a top coat on our sun and then that'll be us. So there is our moon. And 
is our sun. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little tutorial of these guys. Please do let me see in the comments if you guys have recreated them or on Instagram, tag me so that I can see how you guys have got on. Thank you all for joining me tonight and I hope you have a lovely rest of your week and we'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.